Alrighty, so today we are going to talk about how to properly dismantle and clean out your five gallon Cornelius keg or your corny keg um, after you've already run some, uh, some brew through it or if it's your first time you can do this as well if it's the first time conditioning, um, reconditioning your kegs. So what we want to do, these kegs I've been using already so I just finished, uh, finished out the beer in this so what I did is you take your top off once you remove the top, I go into the kitchen, I use some hot water, I spray that in there, wash it out really well, get any leftover sediment, anything, and if you're dry hopping, any dry hop bits that may have been in there, kind of just give it a good rinse, that's all it really is. After you give it a good rinse, what you're going to do is, is I use a uh, Five Stars PBW, this is their Professional Brewers Wash. Um, I use this based off of their directions and the amounts, uh, and I put that in here with water that's like about 110 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So then after I fill it up just a little more than halfway, I'm going to shake my keg around vigorously, get that all mixed up, make sure all of that uh, cleaner is dissolved. Then I'm going to let it sit for probably about 10, 12 minutes or so, somewhere around there, 10, 15 is good. And then after it's sat, again, give it a good shake, and then I'm going to flip it upside down. Now this is why it's important to fill more than just more than half, because basically what you're doing is you're letting this detergent, this cleaner, sit in there and really break down any material or any biomasses in there that may be stuck to the side or to the bottom of your, your tank. Um, so that's the first step. I've already gone ahead and done all that. You don't really want to watch it because it's just a keg sitting there on its top and on its bottom. So once we've done that, you're going to go ahead, you're going to take your bottling brush, you're going to look inside, and your, or your uh, cardboard brush, excuse me, or your keg brush, whichever one you want to use, and you're going to give it a good scrubbing all the way around on all the sides, top, bottom, get that brush in there, because again, you want to try and break up any material that might be kind of crusted onto your keg. If you notice in there that you've got some crusty chunks in there, let it sit longer. It doesn't hurt. Anyway, so we've already cleaned all of that. Next step that we're on now is, is we're going to dismantle the cave and make sure we get all those little nooks and crannies in there where bacteria and yucky things can hide that will ruin or spoil our homebrew. So what I've done is I have over here a stainless steel bucket and in this bucket I have again some PBW mixture. Um, if you don't want to use PBW, that's fine. I use PBW. I also have another cleaner slash sanitizer. Uh, LD Carlson makes a one step and they say it's a no rinse. You can use that as well. Me personally, I found nothing really beats the five stars PBW. I mean this stuff will take your old kegs, mash tons, brew, pedal, uh, brew pots and you think that they're stained and they're just brown that way for a reason, it will make it look brand spanking new. So I use that uh, when I want a really good clean. After we do all of our cleaning, then we will rinse it all out and sanitize, and I'll talk about that in the next segment. But anyway, so I've got a bucket full of nice warm uh, cleaner, not sanitizer, but cleaner. So we're going to take the top off. On the top, you'll have your pressure release valve. Some of them you need a wrench. This one is just a handheld screw up. So you're going to screw this off, and in there you're going to inspect it. You're going to have a little rubber grommets in there. You're going to look at your your spring, you're going to look at your threads, and on my threads you can't really see it, but on there you're going to see a little bit of gunk, a little bit of brown. That's what we're talking about cleaning out. That's going to uh, create bacteria or, or places that stuff that we don't want in our beer to live. So I'm just going to run this uh, as a uh, beer wine brush, and I'm just using that to run it across there just to break it up. Again, that's it. It's all we're doing. We're not trying to refinish the metal. Um, we're just breaking it up this material and then now plunk there it goes she's going to be inside the bucket and I'm going to let that sit in there along with all my other parts I'm going to take off I'm going to let that sit in there for about 15 minutes or so so the rest of the lid on your lid you're going to have your large black rubber seal we're going to go ahead and remove that pretty easy so on my rubber seal I'm going to get a good look I want to fill it with my hands, I want to make sure that there's no dents in it, no grooves, no cracks, or anything like that that would indicate I need to replace it. I mean, come on, it's like 10 bucks for a set of seals, better than wasting and ruining an entire keg of homebrew. So, once I've verified that, boom, it goes into the cleaner as well. 
Now I have my lid and the lid, I'm looking on the inside again, those threads, remember with the pressure release valve I did see some dump, so I'm going to kind of just run this through here, which again, just to break it up, that's all we're trying to do, make sure anything that's kind of stuck or crusty on there isn't going to stay, we don't, want, we don't want this stuff to stay living in there, and then that's off and into the cleaner. Okay, so now what that leaves us with is our posts. We have two posts on our kegs. You're going to have your in valve for your gas and your out valve for your beer. Most kegs you're going to notice a difference between the two posts. Usually your out valve or the beer you know, dispensing uh, uh, post, if you look on the side as we unscrew it, and again I've used my wrench already to pre-loosen this, but as we unscrew it, you're going to look on the side and it's just going to look like a regular bolt portion right here. There's not going to be any markings. Your gas side will be different. Your gas side is either going to have notches cut into the side of your post or it may be a completely different design on the post. This one's just, you know, an octagon. The other one may be like a star formation. What that is is to tell you which side because you can actually, if you put these posts on the wrong sides and connect them the wrong way, it, you won't get beer in other words. But anyway, so we have this, what I'm doing, same thing with the top seal, I'm looking at this little rubber seal along here, I'm looking to see is there anything caught in it, anything broken, anything been chipped or ripped off of this rubber seal, because as we're putting on our ball locks, that can't happen. Next, I'm going to take, and I'm going to push in on the little button on the top there, and what that's going to do is going to pop out that your, your spring right there. So I'm looking at this again, visual inspection, just making sure that the, the rubber and the plastic on it's not cracked or ruined. Plink, and then she's going in there. And I'm looking in here again, looking for crusties or junk, none of that. So that goes in there as well. Um, if you really want to get anal, you can take the rubber seals off of your posts, these little tiny ones. You're going to need like a little fine tooth pick because you really can't do it with your fingers. It's a pain in the world, you know what? Um, but I don't think you need to because it's on the outside so your beer's flowing through that's more or less uh, it's pretty well sealed off um, if you obviously have a broken one then obviously take it out and repair it so now I'm taking off the gas side and then same thing I'm looking at the little spring inside the post popping it out making sure it's good now the posts are different between your gas and your outlet valves which is true your springs on the inside of your post not different, completely interchangeable, doesn't matter which one's which. So no need to worry about confusing those. Now I'm gonna pull out, this here's your little gas valve, or your gas tube right there. Underneath here, you're looking at another one of your little rubber seals. So I'm just bringing it down just a little bit, no need to really take it all off unless it's completely caked in gunk and you really wanna get it clean, you can't. But I'm just bringing it down, looking at it, there's no real gunk on it because it's the gas valve, that's fine. I'm going to look at it, I use my beer line brush, just run it through there, and she goes. Next, I'm going to pull out your dip tube here for your out. Now, if this is your first time, don't freak out. You didn't bend it, you didn't break it. It's supposed to have that natural bend into it. That's what they're designed for. It should reach all the way right down to the very center of your keg. That way it gets literally every last drop. So again, same thing at the top with the little rubber seal. I'll peel this down just a little bit. And I'm pulling it back, looking, just checking for any crusties. Get a little cleaner on there. All right, now this obviously won't fit in the bucket. And I'll put some of it in, and then you're kind of running this. The bottom, you really got to make sure you get this thing nice and clean. You want to push it in and out, run that brush through there to break up anything that might be hiding in there, any crusties, any nasties. Get all that taken care of. All right, so I'm going to let those sit in there for a few minutes. So now what I'm left with, completely dismantled keg, all ready to uh, be rinsed off and then sanitized and then I will put those pieces back on after I rinse and sanitize them as well. So my next step, moving on to the next keg. So I have one, I have another one already to go. This one has been, like I said, just like the other one, 
I've already pre-rinsed it out, gotten all the basic stuff with the hose off that I can. Now I'm putting in my sanitizer, or excuse me, my cleaner. first one, this one hasn't had a chance to sit with the cleaner in it yet, so I am going to lock it up. Once I get it locked up, again, giving it that good shake, you are just trying to make sure that all that surface is covered with this cleaner so it can break down any materials in there. And then we're going to let it sit, like I said, a little more than 50%, so from here on down it's cleaning, it's breaking it apart. And then in about 10 minutes or so, I'm going to flip it over on the other side. So it will literally sit just like that, right down. And then the top part will sit and it will soak and clean as well. And then you're going to go through pretty much the same thing, repeat what we just did with the first one. So now I'm going to go ahead and rinse off this cake and I'll be back and we'll show you how to put everything back together and sanitized. Okay, welcome back. So, <clears throat> like I said, I've already now rinsed out all of my cleaner from my keg. So now we're back pretty much to, you know, a nice clean keg, but it's not sanitized. So bacteria can still kind of grow in it. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to put a sanitizer into our keg. We're going to rinse that around. Again, you're going to leave the sanitizer in there for about 15 minutes or so, and that's going to do its job. Pour your sanitizer back out and keep it in a spare carboy if you've got one and then let your keg air dry at that point. Don't seal it back up, just kind of let it turn it upside down, let it air dry. And then at that point you're done and your keg is ready to accept whatever great brew you've got ready to go into it. So let's get our keg back to the way we need it to be. As you saw before, <clears throat> I've taken everything apart. So what I've got now over here is just a bowl where I've rinsed off all of the parts that I took off previously and they've been sitting in this sanitizer here now for about 15 minutes. So kind of in a reverse order, just the way we took it apart, we're going to put it right back together again. I'm going to take my small dip tube, the one I have here, make sure your rubber seals on it. That's your gas tube going right back into the gas slot. Easy. Next I have in this pocket is my sanitizer, which by the way, you can see here I'm using Star Sand. That's my preferred sanitizer. Again, just read the directions on measuring it out and uh, put it in a plastic bucket. Don't store it in a plastic bucket, but you can keep it in there for a day and that's no problem. That's what I use for sanitizing all of my equipment and everything I do. So now again, we put our dip tube for our out. And just let it go in. It should just go in nice and smooth. You don't need to force it. Just look down in there, kind of work it in, make sure, reach in and pull it down if you need to, but it should be nice and flush with the top or with the base for your post here. If it's sticking up, you just got to work it until it gets right into its own little position. Don't force them. If you force it, it's not going to work. All right, so I'm picking out one of my posts like I pulled off before. I've got my spring-loaded plunger. I'm just popping that back in, make sure it's seated well. Then I'm looking at it, which one is it? There are no hash marks on it, there's no stars, there's no nothing on the base of the post. So that tells me this is my uh, out valve post. So I'm just gonna put that and just kind of hand tighten it right on the top there. And then the same thing with this other one. Again, I'm seeing, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but uh, let me see if I can bring it closer here. I don't know if you can see that. You can see those little hash marks that are on there. That's how I know that this is the post that will go into my, or go onto my, uh, my gas base right here. So that's where we screw that down. Again, just get it nice and hand tight. After we get it hand tight, take your tool, crank it down. Get it nice and snug. You don't need to do the, you know, Superman tight. It just needs to be nice and snug so nothing's going to leak out of it. You can pressure test your keg later on. 
just fill it full of water, put some pressure on it, probably about 25, 30 PSI at most, turn it upside down, nothing drips out, you're good. All right, so I have my lid, again, the rubber seal, I'm just sliding that back on. They've been soaking in the sanitizer. The rubber seal is all nice and ready to go. And I'll just pop that on there to help push that rubber seal back into place. I take my pressure release valve and I just screw that back in nice and smooth. There we go. So now that's it. Keg completely reassembled. Now we need to sanitize the inside of the keg. So in the bucket here of star sand that I have, again, I've got about three and a half gallons or so in here. So I'm gonna just simply pour that in. Don't worry about the bubbles on the star sand. Everybody says, oh, it looks like soap. You think you gotta rinse it afterwards. You're just gonna hurt your keg. Once you sanitize, you do not wanna put anything else in here except for beer. No need to rinse it. So, don't worry about the bubbles. Bubbles won't hurt anything. It's not soap. It's not going to mess with your beer. I've never had any off flavors created because of star sham. Um, so, again, follow the directions on it. You're fine. So now, just put it right in. Pop her down. Just like I did before. I'm kind of shaking it up. Just to get everything all in there. Let her sit on one side, have her sit like so for five minutes, turn it over, let it sit again for five minutes, drain it out into your storage for your sanitizer, let it sit empty and dry, and you're done. So, hopefully that helped everything. That's how you dismantle, properly sanitize your corny cakes. Enjoy.